Last time on Big Data and Brews, Mike Olson of Cloudera discussed SQL. There is so much money in the SQL query processing market, and there are such large entrenched players mm -hmm. uh, that there's huge interest in exclusive control over the different engines in the market. Cloudera's vision for Impala. Our vision for Impala is likewise not an OLTP engine, right? It's an analytic database. Mm -hmm. So I want to mostly read, and when I read, I want to run sophisticated anal analyses. I want to create you know, window functions and, and look mm -hmm. at the data. And what he thinks is missing from the Hadoop architecture. The key missing feature from the storage layer, frankly, mm -hmm. is transactions. And now, here's more big data and brews. So let's talk a little bit about Spark. Mm -hmm. um, he has a lot of hype around Spark. Um, he has a lot of challenges with Spark. So what's, what's the good and the ugly? Um, so the good is that a group of researchers at UC Berkeley took the lessons that we collectively had learned from a decade or so of use of MapReduce mm -hmm. and used those lessons to, de to design what you might call a second system. Right? Yeah. If you were starting from a clean sheet of paper today on this scale-out architecture, what would you build? Would it be exactly what Jeff Dean and Sanjay Gemmelwad conceived as MapReduce map, map in mm -hmm. 2002 or so? No, probably not, right? So Spark is a general purpose engine for executing uh, uh, directed acyclic graphs of processing. MapReduce has a problem that you map, you shuffle, you reduce. Yep. And if you want to do complicated stuff, you got to string a bunch of those together. Yep. And that middle step, shuffle. The shuffle. Well, that's, that, that's why it's batch. That, that's exactly. That's, that's yep. we'll just stand on the parking brake for a while, right? right? Um, Spark uses memory wisely, so mm -hmm. it's able to run very quickly. But it also doesn't force you to put that synchronization step mm -hmm. in between every useful operation, and so it runs much better. Um, What's, I guess another good thing is that it began at Berkeley, but now it's got a huge ecosystem of contributors and developers, like 500 people are writing and committing code into the mm -hmm. uh, project. It's very widely embraced by much of the industry. I believe, we believe at Cloudera, that it's the likeliest successor to MapReduce. So that mm -hmm. doesn't say that MapReduce, the original Google concept, ever leaves the platform. That engine mm -hmm. will be part of CDH forever, our distro. Mm -hmm. um, but we see more new workloads launching on Spark than on MapReduce mm -hmm. these days. Easier to program, addresses a bunch of those latency and other issues, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I think it's got a great, great future. Databricks, the company, got funded by Andreessen Horowitz and others. Uh, they're driving innovation on the platform. We've got people contributing. Uh, the ecosystem looks pretty healthy there. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> we also think that it's the right substrate for Hive. Mm -hmm. So. Um, there's no question that MapReduce has been a challenge, mm -hmm. right? Uh, people have huge latency issues. Um, making Hive run better is an important goal mm -hmm. because so many workloads depend on Hive mm -hmm. for the kind of trans, uh, transformation and, and processing and, and exploratory workloads. Uh, we think by swapping MapReduce out and Spark in, we get two benefits. Mm -hmm. One is Spark, with its huge ecosystem, is going to continue to innovate and get faster and better in lots of ways. Um, but second, we dramatically reduce the latency in queries running here. Still, by the way, we expect to be much slower Hive running on Spark than Hive running on, or, or than, than Impala running natively on that data. Mm -hmm. But they're used for different workloads so, already. So, so you continue to invest in Impala? Oh, yeah, no though? question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and our view really is analytic workloads in Impala, the kind of transform transformation and, and, and batch workloads are going to run on just a much better hive mm -hmm. with a faster substrate than that. Mm -hmm. Where's Tess coming in in your strategy? Um, Tess is a good engine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, solid work. Right now, really, the only uh, company contributing to the Tess project is Hortonworks. Mm -hmm. So, right now, we don't have a Tess strategy. Uh, that's mm -hmm. not to say we wouldn't evolve one later, mm -hmm. uh, and that's not in any way to impugn the work. But a couple of, a couple of observations. One is, uh, it's still a very new project, mm -hmm. right? And you know, I know, that uh, software becomes reliable by being deployed and running in production at lots and lots of places, yep. right? Early projects are always unreliable. It's very dangerous, yeah. Yeah, well, and I, and I think Tez is likely to mature. Mm -hmm. Certainly, Hortonworks has made a big bet on it. Um, but early deployments are going to be challenging. The fact that 
The fact that Spark has such a large community, the fact that it's been in production deployment for a couple of years already, mm -hmm. we think make it a safer substrate here. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll continue to evaluate how and when uh, we would embrace TES. Uh, right now, the strategy is, and, and we actually announced this a week or two back, we're working with IBM, mm -hmm. Databricks, Intel, MapR, and us, Cloudera, mm -hmm. to take the suite of tools that run on MapReduce, mm -hmm. Pig, Hive, Scoop, and others, mm -hmm. and port them to run on Spark. Yep. And we think that that's going to be a better bet long term. Uh, just a natural successor engine to MapReduce. Mm -hmm. And, and less complexity in the platform, less you know, less proliferation of different alternative SQL and so on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, what's with the challenges that the test has around data guarantees, right? So you 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 kill one server and you're not sure how much data you preprocess. I mean, that was the whole reason we had the shuffle stage, right? Because right. if you, a member died, you can re-execute the whole thing. So test seemed to be a little bit challenged there. I mean, as we go to financial service companies, they like really, really. Um, concerned, you know, calculating certain risk scores twice by mistake because of the issues. Look, I said it before, building database systems is a very difficult thing. I've got huge respect for the existing products that are in that market. Um, because we're not including Hive and CDH at present, and, and, and because frankly I don't know nearly enough about the implementation, I don't want to pick on it. What I will say is young technology aimed at these s seasoned workloads, right? Mm -hmm. People have been running those kind of analytics and those kind of processes on databases for a very long time. It's a risky thing to do. You're exactly right. You want to know the semantics of the underlying engine, its predictability, and so on. Uh, so I think those are the hurdles that Hive on Tez, that new combination on that new engine, mm -hmm. need to clear. And, yeah. and probably it will, but probably it's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. Let's switch gears here a little bit. Um, so you guys driving very hard the concept of a data hub. Yes. What is that? What's the difference to what we did before? And what are the use cases that you see uh, in the different uh, industry areas? So, you know, the, the first thing that I would say is that as data volumes are exploding and, and data becomes not people generated, but machine generated, right? Uh -huh. The phone you carry in your pocket, the sensors in your building and so on, it's getting produced at a, at a rate that's just totally out of whack with whatever happened before, right? Mm -hmm. So traditional centralized systems can't scale up to store it. And that's why the Google architecture, the scale out system, is so attractive, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the existing systems that our customers run, mm -hmm. we, we walk into a data center and they're running Teradata for mission critical applications. Like if that application gives a wrong answer, mm -hmm. the CFO goes to jail, yeah. right? Those workloads are unlikely to migrate to any new platform mm -hmm. for a very long time, mm -hmm. if ever. Mm -hmm. That said, data volumes are exploding. We've got these new capabilities, and I'll just add Spark because we've been talking about it. Mm -hmm. Coming into this platform, um, we believe that this collection, what the Hadoop ecosystem has pr produced, is a natural place for vast new data sets and for a bunch of new workloads to migrate. By the way, I should say this as well. There's a resource management layer in here called Yarn. Mm -hmm. It's very important. If you're going to be using lots of different ways to get a data, you want to be sure that you can control resource consumption, memory, CPU, and all the sure. rest. Without this layer, this whole thing doesn't work. Right? Let me let me pause you there for just one second. So so one pushback that we heard from a few customers is Impala isn't sitting on Yarn at this point. Is that Fixed in the next release. Okay. So, so we, yeah, we've done that. We began our work on Impala several years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and when we did, Yarn was very far from ready for prime time. Mm -hmm. But, but you need everybody to pay attention to resource management here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, this architecture, you've got all your data stored in a, in, you, you've got lots and lots of data stored in a convenient place. You've got different ways to get at it. You're able to manage all those workloads in a clean way. You've got security and data governance and data lineage and a bunch of enterprise class services. This becomes a natural place to land data mm -hmm. and, and maybe even to take some workloads, ETL is a good example, that traditionally ran on a big data warehouse and move it to this scale out cheaper mm -hmm. and, and also, by the way, tens, hundreds, thousands of computers are going to get faster mm -hmm. infrastructure. So this is a natural 
central place to land data. Mm -hmm. We call it an enterprise data hub because those spokes have to connect to other systems, you know, your existing data warehouse, your document management system, or to your users, right? The folks that you serve with, with Datamare. Mm -hmm. um, the data, the centralization is good, important, allows people to capture data that they couldn't have afforded to do before and explore it in ways that they never could before because they've got these new algorithms and tools. Mm -hmm. But it has to integrate into the rest of their infrastructure, and that's why it's a hub. It must mm -hmm. connect to those yeah. other systems. In <clears throat> Of course, beside data mirror, what are you seeing um, living on top of the data hub? Right? So, what are the access mechanisms? I mean, just typing SQL queries, maybe not the future. Yeah, when we first started out, the only thing there was was MapReduce, right? right? And I talked to people in the database industry that said, you have to sell to Java programmers, you're doomed, right? Yeah. What they didn't recognize was that you would see these other engines come into mm -hmm. the market that could raise or simplify the interfaces that people dealt with. Um, if you look at the evolution of the relational database market, right, when, when relational databases were brand new in the 80s when I was working on that technique, they, there were no DBAs. Mm -hmm. SQL had not even won yet, right? There yeah. was still IDL and QL, yeah. right? Um, there were no applications that ran on this platform. Mm -hmm. That's where we were when Cloudera started, mm -hmm. right? We had this great new architecture with a totally unskilled user base mm -hmm. and no apps. Yeah. That's gotten much better. You guys were very early in the market making data stored in this infrastructure available. Um, but it was merely that you were uh, visionary early first uh, compared to the rest of the market. We're seeing more tools come mm -hmm. out now that run on this infrastructure. But mostly connected to like an SQL engine then, yeah? Um, there are lots of SQL applications. <coughs> but for example, um, we've got a couple of uh, ISV partners, independent software vendor partners, mm -hmm. that build full stack applications. So you can go right now to Nice Systems, mm -hmm. and you can buy a you can buy an application that's basically a next best action recommender for mm -hmm. retailers, right? And it runs <laughs> on all this infrastructure, and the user doesn't even know that there's HDFS and MapReduce and all that stuff. And They're then, just running that. And Data Mirror behind that, yeah. And Data Mirror is in there as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we've got. We're seeing now uh, the emergence of what I think of as the next generation of analytic and exploratory applications mm -hmm. aimed at business users, so built on top of this level, mm -hmm. right? But uh, delivering business value that hides the technology underneath. And that's mm -hmm. what happened with relational databases, yeah. right? People started paying attention to Oracle financials, yeah. not to Oracle database. Right, and uh, that will be the future, right? Delivering yeah, value on top. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks for the great refreshing view. It's such a great summer day in San Francisco. I Thank hope you. Uh, you come back. I will. Cheers. Good to see you, man.